today's video is going to be a full body workout. It's gonna be using a barbell this time. So this is perfect if you're just wanting to stay in one spot and hit all your muscle groups. So I'm gonna be going through all of the exercises first and then also explaining the workout as we go along. So the first things we're gonna be doing is going to be our legs. We're gonna be doing a barbell back squat. Starting off with the barbell back squat, I always position this somewhere where my shoulder's slightly above because I never wanna be like tiptoeing the weight back up. After you're tired after a set, it's not ideal. So starting here, we're gonna go under. We're gonna place the bar, it's gonna be a high bar squat. So it's gonna be just resting on our traps. When you come off from the rack, you just wanna take as minimal steps as possible. You wanna be dancing around, doing all that stuff. So just two steps, making sure your feet are in line. Head up, it's great if you have a mirror in front of you because you can actually watch as you go down for the squat that our knees are staying parallel and then we're heading straight back up. Now for a barbell squat, one of the most important things is to get full range of motion. However, if you do have a limited range of motion because you're tight in your hips, your ankles, anything like that, you're gonna work in the range of motion that you have and then potentially modify after. So heading down, my hips are going down. I can get down to here. Now, if you have this range of motion but your back tends to curve, you're gonna wanna stay away from that because it's gonna hurt your low back during your squat. You always wanna keep a neutral spine and then we're gonna power up through our heels, squeeze and stand. To bring the weight back, we're gonna come in, bring it down nice and safe, step out, and that's typically the barbell squat. Now, if you are someone who struggles with range of motion, there's a couple things we can do here. You can do barbell squats with a box. You can do them with your heels elevated. That's gonna allow you to get a greater range of motion or work in a safer range of motion, but still be able to do this workout. So for instance, if you're doing it with a box, you wanna make sure you're at least hitting parallel. So I would use something like a bench or stackers and basically place it just slightly below your knee. So kind of like calf level. And then you wanna make sure that you do it first body weight, kind of feel where the box is, so that way spatially you're aware of where you are. And then you can do it with the barbell. If you're doing with your heels elevated, it's super easy. You can just grab one of these little guys here. And basically what you would do is just place them where your feet would be going. And this allows your heels to be slightly elevated. So for those of you who do have a little bit limited range of motion, you could still get down nice and far in your squat and power it back up. Now, because this is full body, we don't need to go super heavy. I wouldn't recommend that. You can kind of work at almost like a like 60, 65%. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. What that means is you're gonna be working at 65% of your max. So for instance, if my one rep max is 185, working at 65% is an easy calculation. It's 185 times 0.65, and it's gonna land you around 120. So that means I would do all my sets at 120 pounds. And that's gonna be a good weight for me for the specific rep range as well as this workout. So if you're someone who doesn't know their one rep max, it's super easy. You can just do a test day, make sure you have spotters there for you, or you can just work up close to your one rep max and do the calculation from there. And rep ranges here for this workout is going to be anywhere between eight to 12, depending on how you're feeling that day. If you're someone who's more newer to a full body workout, start out smaller and you can always work your way up. If you're going for something super volume, you can go 12 to 15, but I would typically do this at like 10 reps for the bar. But Ooh, words are hard, barbell squat. Second exercise is going to be a pull-up variation. So we're gonna do this two different ways depending on your level. The first one, we're gonna get right underneath the bar. We're gonna hook our thumbs. This is gonna be feet stay on the ground. It's just gonna be an assisted pull-up. So coming up and coming down. If you're advanced, we're gonna lift our legs up and make it an L-sit pull-up. So depending on your level, you can pick between those two variations. Now, I like to keep my barbell at the same height for everything just to make it nice and easy. However, if you are someone who needs a little bit more change in it, feel free to just bring it down each one. It just gets a little bit more complicated through your reps, but do what's best for you. All right, so for the modified or assisted pull-up first, I'm just gonna show you from the side. One of the key components here is we wanna make sure that we're actually imitating what's gonna happen in a real pull-up. So we wanna be pulling up nice and straight. So if your legs are here, I don't want you pulling out, out this way, because we're not gonna be using the same muscles. We wanna make sure that we're pulling the bar to our chest, chin over bar, and coming straight back down. For this one, if it is assisted, one of the biggest things that you can do for yourself to help you eventually get your full pull-up is to actually do a nice slow negative focus on flaring your lats. I think I've talked about it before, but think of engaging this area as you're lowering down from the bar. For someone who's doing an L-sit pull-up, one of the big things here that we wanna make sure is, is that we can keep our legs at 90 degrees the entire time. This one is a proper L-sit pull-up, but you're also engaging your back and your core at the same time. So it's a two for one, which makes it a really fun exercise to add in into a full body workout. So here, legs start on, we're gonna lift pull up and back down. So as I'm going, I'm making sure that I have tension in my legs, my core is tight. And even though it is a harder pull up and it's a little bit slower, I'm still making sure that I get that full range of motion. I'm not cheating at all. The chin is coming right above that bar and it's not like your forehead because those aren't real pull ups. Quick break in between this workout. You guys always ask how I stay energized. So for me, I usually like a stim free pre-workout. It gets a good pump and it does get my energy levels up. I like stim free because I also usually have an energy drink. That's why. And my favorite is obviously going to be the transparent labs. My favorite flavor is the peach mango. Can't go wrong. You guys want to try it out 
workout, little T fitness to save. Now let's get back to the video. Third movement of this workout, we're gonna be hitting our legs again, but we're gonna be hitting the posterior side, so our hamstrings and our glutes. We're gonna be doing a nice conventional deadlift. So for those of you who are new to deadlifts, we're just gonna walk through it really quick. We're gonna make sure that as soon as we pick up the bar, we are doing proper technique. You're not gonna pick up the bar completely rolled up like that, because then you're gonna hurt yourself as soon as it's loaded. So getting down nice and low, we want our hands just slightly wider than our legs. Our feet will just be like around hip width or slightly wider. We're gonna right away have tension in the bar. We're gonna put, bring our shoulders back, tight core, lift nice slap back, and start at the top of the deadlift. So starting this movement off, we wanna make sure we have a nice tight core, and we're gonna push our hips backwards. So hips are gonna shoot backwards, bar is gonna stay nice and close to us. We're gonna keep a neutral spine, and our gaze will be just right in front of us, down to about our shin height, and then coming back up tight and squeezing. Main thing here is it's a hinging movement in our hips. So the only movement I should see is in my hip area. It's not a bending movement with my legs where I'm moving the bar up and down. I'll be shooting backwards. Knees stay relatively the same, coming down and coming back up nice and strong. One of the biggest things with deadlifts, if you're a beginner, this is what I recommend, we don't wanna like squeeze and hyperextend. Just because we're new to the form, we're gonna get injured. We just wanna make sure that as we're extending upwards, we're tight core, tight glutes, and staying nice and straight. We're not hyperextending through our low back. Now, when you're done your set, as much as we just wanna drop the weight or be lazy with it, we still wanna make sure that we're nice and tight. So again, we're gonna be basically doing a deadlift on the way down, setting the weight down, releasing, and then you can get up any which way you want. So for deadlift, one of the main things, if you're someone who's got bad grip strength like myself. I don't like to sacrifice weight for grip, so I'll actually use wrist wraps. If you're someone who's fine with that, you can definitely just like not worry about it. I just have weak hands. I don't know why, I just do. So I'm someone who uses wrist wraps. So my max deadlift is much higher. It's like 225. However, for me, in order to keep a safe amount, like safe throughout my entire reps for my form, I like to just work at a nice 135 for my deadlift. Some people call that lazy. I just call it safe because anything heavier, I tend to get a little bit more, well, if with my form so 135 for me and again this is going to be probably around the same rep range 10 to 12. i know on my pull-ups i didn't say how many reps the rep range for that would again be around the same maybe six to ten. Fourth and final exercise is going to be hitting our chest when we're doing inclined bench press so the setup for this you want to make sure that your bench i like mine personally set at this height depending on your bench sometimes they don't have the exact one that you like but you do want it a little bit higher because that's going to be a true incline you want to make sure we have four points of contact we're going to have each foot so one two our bum always stays flat and then our shoulders and our head as well well, so that's gonna be our four points. You wanna be able to see the bar right in like above you. So if it's behind you, that's gonna make it really hard to unrack and also unsafe. So you wanna make sure that it's right above you. Hands are just gonna go slightly wider than your chest. You always wanna brace yourself before you start moving. So you don't wanna brace as you're moving. You wanna find your spot, come down to your chest and bring it straight back up nice and strong. So as we come down to our chest, we wanna make sure the line, the bar, sorry, is moving in a straight line and coming right to the top of our sternum and then punching it straight back up. So if you come here and your bar is like moving all over the place, it's gonna feel really scary, one, but also it's gonna be dangerous for injuries. Rack it and then you're all done. This is one of my favorite exercises. Reason being, you could do a flat bench, absolutely, but an inclined bench actually gets a full workout of your entire chest. A flat bench doesn't get that upper chest, which is what we're hitting here. And because it's full body, we wanna be getting as much muscle recruitment as possible through these exercises.